Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm really shaken up right now because the craziest thing happened probably about 10 minutes ago when I was driving home from school and I decided to share it with you guys in a story time because why not? Something happened to me a week ago probably that was equally as traumatic that I thought I would also include in this video. I thought both of these stories were super interesting and they could be the most boring things ever but Please keep in mind that I was the one living through them and they were very scary for me at least. For anyone who thinks that these stories are going to be a lie, you're wrong. Honestly, I'm not even shocked that any of these things happened to me because I have unfortunate things happen to me pretty much all the time. I'm going to get into what happened 10 minutes ago because you can listen and see for yourself. I was driving home from school as I usually do. Normally once I'm done with school, I'm super stressed out and I take some time to myself to kind of bring my stress levels down and drive around for maybe 10-15 minutes before I go home. Today I just, I don't know, I was in the mood to drive around. So I drove around for maybe 20-30 minutes and what I forgot was I didn't have my driver's license with me. I was in a rush this morning and I didn't grab my wallet which was stupid of me. I then proceeded to drive around without a wallet not even locally. I was on this road, it was a 45 speed limit I'm pretty sure and I was going maybe 55 not 60, but 55, which clearly is speeding, and I've never gotten pulled over for a speeding ticket before. I see this cop car come up behind me. I didn't really think anything of it because normally cop cars don't, but it was following me for a good five minutes, which is, you know, whatever. Because it was following me, I decided to slow down. All of a sudden, its lights started blinking red and blue, and that freaked me out because there was no one else it was following. I didn't really understand why it decided to flash its lights, but it did. Cop and I pulled up behind this light, so it's me, and then the cop behind me with its lights flashing. And I didn't know what to do. It hit me that I didn't even have my driver's license. I was already freaking out that I was probably going to get a speeding ticket because this cop saw me speeding. I assumed the worst. I thought if you didn't have your driver's license and you got a ticket, you could get your whole driver's license taken away. Then, the car in front of me sees me, and in their mirror or whatever, I make eye contact with them. And they start waving at me. They start motioning to go to my right. And I'm not really sure what they meant by that, but I assumed that they meant you need to pull over to the right and get your ticket or whatever. I'm freaking out, and this person keeps motioning at me, doing these hand gestures, and I'm literally sitting there like, I don't know what you're talking about because it's a red light right now. There are cars going on my right side. I can't just merge because people are going 45 right now and they're not going to see a car randomly coming out of nowhere. This person is not helping. I'm about to go to the right like the car is telling me, and then they tell me to stop. And mind you, this isn't even the cop. This is the person in front of me while the cop is watching behind me. So I stop, naturally. They tell me to back up. <laughs> so I do. Tears are starting to form in my face because I'm mortified and I know I'm going to get a ticket. All of a sudden, they motion for me to go to my other side. I decide to look in the cop car behind me because I'm like, maybe this cop is chill. Maybe they feel really bad for me. Or maybe they see that, you know, I'm a young kid. I don't really know what I'm doing. But no, it happens to be this really older guy that doesn't look sympathetic at all, not someone that I can negotiate with, someone that's probably going to take away my license and put me in jail, basically. Pretty much the longest light ever. I'm sure this has only been like three minutes, but it feels like five hours. I don't even want to try at this point. I put on my turn signal, but I don't try to merge into the left lane until the light turns green. I didn't want to embarrass myself again, and I thought it was a lot safer. This person keeps motioning to me, and I'm just sitting there like this. I don't want to look at the cop behind me, and I don't want to look at the person in front of me. Literally trying to avert eye contact from everyone. The light turns green and then I go to the left. I'm waiting for the cop to pull left so that they can come behind me again and they don't. The cop stays behind that car. That car ends up getting a ticket. I don't really know what happened. I'm not sure if that car knew that they were getting a ticket or if they called for help from the cops and they were telling me do you need to go to the side so that I can deal with this cop or whatever or if they actually thought that I was getting a ticket and then they ended up getting a ticket. But regardless, I had the biggest sigh of relief. I legitimately thought that my life was over, wasn't going to drive for the next five years, and yeah, it was very traumatic. And this happened like 10 minutes ago, and reliving it is already giving me anxiety. Anyway, I'm going to move on to my next slash final story of what happened about a week ago. A little backstory, we had a generator in our basement. It's a little bit older. We had the furnace guys come check it out. They let us know, like, hey, your generator is leaking 
carbon monoxide, you should probably get that checked out because that's not really safe to have leaking in your house. I remember I had come home from school that day and I would overheard them telling my parents that. Right now I'm in environmental science and we're actually learning about carbon monoxide gas, the effects of it and how much it can hurt you, just how awful it can be if you inhale it. So I was already <laughs> nervous about it but having it in my own house really freaked me out. The guy said yeah it's a safe amount and it's going to be fine but it still freaked me out. What ended up happening was the carbon monoxide gas stayed within my furnace room but the guys decided that they wanted to leak it out for some reason because they couldn't just leave it in the furnace room. They had to open the door and let it basically spread out in my basement. And I knew that this was safe. I trusted the furnace guys and the levels were safe enough to a point where we could still stay within the house. But I really didn't know what to do because I didn't want to die and I had just learned about all these people that had died from carbon monoxide gas emissions. I went to badminton that night. I was out of the house for most of the evening whatever which was nice. But once I got home, it was around bedtime, I told my parents, I'm like, I really can't sleep like this. This freaks me out knowing that some people can fall asleep with carbon monoxide and not wake up. And my parents told me, it's fine, you'll be fine, the levels are safe or whatever. And I believed them, but I still freaked out. I had to know that I was safe. What I did was I googled all about carbon monoxide and I realized that the levels rose. So then, thinking to myself, I realized my bedroom is on the top floor. The carbon monoxide must be in my room and killing me. And this sounds funny now, but logically at the time it made sense. It was also like 3 o'clock in the morning. In the basement, that's where the carbon monoxide originally was, so there was really no safe ground. I tried to sleep in the kitchen and then the living room and then the dining room, but then I realized this is stupid. Like, I can't sleep on the floor because I couldn't. It was around 4 o'clock in the morning at this point, and I realized something had to be done. I did what any logical person would do, and I opened all of my windows and I let all the oxygen come in my house so that I could breathe fine. The carbon monoxide emissions would get spread out or whatever and it would become CO2 again. I knew that I was going to wake up freezing, but I looked at the trade-offs. A. Die. Or B. Live and be freezing for one night. And it seemed like a no-brainer to me. I wrapped myself in like 10 blankets and then I put on a winter coat. I went to bed with all of my windows open and I was okay. I felt really proud of myself because it seems like the best solution. My family on the other hand was not super happy with me, especially the next morning waking up when my house was like 30 degrees, but safe to say we got our furnace replaced, <laughs> the house is safe now. Those were two of the many, many, many traumatic experiences I face on an everyday basis. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I can definitely share more story times. These are such minuscule stories in comparison to the other stupid things that I do. But I figured I would start small because some things I don't really even want to put on the internet because they're so stupid. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I will see you guys on my next video. Bye. Mwah.